The world today seems not to be a safety place to live in. My brothers and sisters, no wonder we all feel a bit more and anxious these days. In fact, research shows that there are five primary marks of insecurity today. And the first one is helplessness. The second, isolation. Third, vulnerability. Fourth, fear of the future. And five, extreme pessimism. Insecurity today leads us to say things like this. Something bad is going to happen and there is nothing I can do about it. And no one can help me. Today we worry about our finances, money to pay the bills, money to pay our loans. We worry about our job security. We worry about whether or not our marriages will make it. We worry about our health. We worry about what will happen in our old age. We worry about the future of our children, the future of our young people. We worry about our investment and a whole host of personal issues that serve our courage and causes us to stay awake at night worrying about tomorrow or the day after tomorrow or next week or next month or the next year. There are many things or situations in life that can bring fear or panic or insecurity into our lives. But the good news is that Jesus says in our text, do not fear. Do not be afraid. So in our text, Jesus assures us that we need not to be afraid in this insecure world that we find ourselves because he himself is our security. So for Jesus, God knows us and watches over us to the point of being able to count the number of prayers on our head. It means that God has interest in each one of us. No matter what our situation is, as an individual and as a nation, God sees all. And God knows it all. He knows our struggles. He knows the challenges that confront us as individual, as a nation. God knows. He sees it all. And He cares, my brothers and sisters. God knows our challenges as a nation and as individuals. And God cares. Therefore, when threatening circumstances press us to lose hope, we can find encouragement knowing that we are under God's watchful care. So our case comes to us that trouble may come in our lives, in our nation, in our family, but God has not forgotten us. No matter what you are going through, sometimes you might think that God has deserted you. God has forgotten about you. Let me assure you that God has never forgotten you. He cares for you. In fact, God is always there. He is present whether you believe it or not. God is with us. So in our text, verse 29 of Matthew chapter 10, it reads, I am not two sparrows sold for a penny. Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. So it points to us that all the challenges may come on our way. But God has not forgotten us. Jesus is telling us that God watches the sparrows when they fall. So if God watches sparrows, how much more about we human beings? that God will forget about us. If his eyes are on the sparrows, then be rest assured that his eyes are on you. There are times when we are tempted to doubt God's care and think that he has forgotten us. Let us remember, he cannot forget his people or forsake us. So whatever trials and challenges that confront us as people, as a nation, 
Let us remember that God has not forsaken us. God is still in charge. God is still in control. And therefore we can trust this God. He loves us with a deep kind of love. Jesus wants us to know that no matter what happens in our society, even when children take gun to school, God still remember us. No matter what happens in our country, he is with us. We are not to be afraid. Government can decide to lay off workers, but God will take care of us. He will take care of us. God will help us, my brothers and sisters. He is our help in times of trouble. He knows our inside out. He knows how we feel as people in terms of our economy, in terms of everything, our health issue, and everything going on in our society. God knows, he sees, and he cares. He knows what is going on in your life. He knows what is going on in your family, in your marriage. He will never forsake you, nor leave you alone. He will be with us until the end of it. That is his promise to all of us. We need to stop worrying about some things in life. The Lord is on our side. He is behind us. He is with us. If he cares for sparrows, the same God cares for us, my brothers and sisters. Not only he has not forgotten us. Even if trouble comes, God still cares for us. The tiniest details of our life. He cares for every detail of our life. So verse 30 of our test, Matthew chapter 10 says, and oh, even the done. very days of the day oh, are all numbered. Think about these things. Our God is a God of the details. He knows every bit about us. If God cares for the things that matter so little, then he cares for things that matter much, and you matter to him. And if God knows each strand of our hair individually, he knows each of us individually as well. This means that God's knowledge of us is not just general, but amazingly specific. So God has specific knowledge about everything that you are going through. He knows us through and through, and he knows us in a minute detail. In fact, he knows us far better than we know ourselves. Sometimes we tend to look at the million dollar answer to prayer and say what a mighty God we serve. But the God of the large is also the God of the small. So my brothers and sisters, we need to trust this God. Every promise that he has made, he will surely fulfill it in your life. All that we need to do is to be patient and trust him. Sometimes we doubt about the power of God. Let me assure you this morning that whatever that you are going through, every situation, every stress that you find yourself, do not kill yourself knowing that God knows everything that you are going through. Sometimes we doubt God's care because we cannot see the future. We don't know what God has planned around the next corner. We should know that he will care for us. Sometimes we look at our houses, we look at our cars and bank account and declare whether or not God has been good or not. Finally, my brothers and sisters, let us remember that God still loves us, no matter what we have done. No matter how far we have gone away from him, he still loves us. So verse 31 of our text says, so don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Today, Jesus is telling us as people that we worth more than sparrows. Tiny sparrows worth so little, and yet God cares for each one of them. But you are worth more than the sparrow. How do I know this? Because Jesus didn't die for the sparrows. He died for you and I. His blood is the badge of his love, the proof of his everlasting affection. Because of 
this. Keep your chin up and keep moving forward. As people, let us know there is hope coming. Let us know that all is not lost. Let us know that God is with us. He is with us. No matter what we are experiencing, no matter how economic challenges that we find ourselves, no matter how health challenges that we find ourselves, let us remember that God is with us as people. And therefore, we can trust this God. It is my prayer this morning that we look up to this God. You may face certain challenges and you think that is the end of your life. That is not the end of your life. Just look up to this God. Let me pray with you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray this morning, all those who are facing trial times in their life, I lift such people into your hand. We pray, O oh God, that you reach out to such people, those who are planning to commit suicide, those who are involved in drugs, gun-related issues, O oh God. We pray that you liberate such people and let your peace rest in our nation. Bless all of us, O oh God, we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.